Someone asked about Jesus calling people dogs. Do you want me to address that one? That mm -hmm. comes up all the time. So, so Jesus called the Gentile a dog. Do you want me to take that, tackle that? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can. Yeah, because it came up. And it, did Jesus... Wait, wait, and, and, and th 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 this lady that, that, that he calls his offensive name, didn't he, didn't he heal her daughter? Exactly. Well, do you think protection. she went away mad? She went away happy. But on top of that, <laughs> it shows his omnipresence and omnipotence yeah. because he cast out the demon from her daughter without physically being there, even though she was a great distance away. Mm -hmm. So here's a passage that shows Christ's omnipresence, omnipotence, his power over creation. Real quickly, let me just read the passage that the person was alluding to. The objection is Jesus called Gentiles dogs, and that's derogatory. And by, by the way, who was, who was using it? Was this a Muslim or a Christian? Yeah, it was a Muslim. a Muslim. That's a Muslim? Wait, wait, wait. Your book calls Jews and Christians yeah. the worst of creatures? I'm yeah. really surprised. <laughs> worst of creatures? Yeah. And you're complaining. Okay. It's point. Yeah, they're good. they brought up, but I want to help the Christians here. Let me read it, Matthew 15, 26, 27. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And I want you to catch where these dogs are. Let me repeat the response. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Number one, this is not something I made up. This is something in Scripture. There are actually two different words for dogs. The word that he uses here is kunarion. Kunarion. Of course, I want to butcher the Greek. Kunarion, right? There's another word for a dog. Kuon. Kuon. This other word, kuon, appears in the following passages. And I just want people to write that down. We're not going to read them. Matthew 7, 6, where he says, Do not give what is sacred to dogs. Matthew 7, 6. Philippians 3, 3. 2 Peter 2, 2. I'm sorry. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. Revelation 22, 15. In those places, the word kuon is used, and it always refers to a reprobate unbeliever who is <clears throat> worthy of judgment and destruction. That's not the word he uses for, for the woman. This other word refers to reprobate, unregenerate, sinners, hellbound, whom God will destroy. That's not the word he used for this one. The word kunarion, as any lexical source will confirm, doesn't mean a rabid dog or an unclean animal that's only good for destruction. It actually means a house pet, a house puppy, and lexical sources confirm it. So Jesus wasn't insulting her. He was actually reassuring her. He was telling her, I've come to the children of Israel first because the promises were given to them. They must be fed, and then you will also be fed, but it's not your time. That's why she responded the way she did, because notice what Jesus said. It is not fitting to take the bread of the children and give it to their dogs. And she goes, yeah, but Lord, even the dogs are able to snatch a breadcrumb from the master's table. So where are the dogs? They're in the house. Why? Because they are pets beloved by the owner. So they're not some stray animals, stray dogs, who are good for nothing but destruction. And ironically, I think this Muslim is viewing the term dog through the lenses of Muhammad. Because it's Muhammad who ate dogs and had them killed, had them butchered. And you have a video on that, don't you? One of the series. It's in one of your series. I, I don't remember videos. Again. So actually, he's encouraging her. Yes, you have a place in the master's house because you are a dearly beloved pet, a puppy, dear to the master's house. He will feed you. But first, let's feed the children. That's why she responded, okay then, but give me a breadcrumb until then. And he did by healing her daughter. That term, house, pu house, house pet or puppy, is no more inf offensive than when Jesus, earlier in the chapter, in Matthew 15, 24, said to the children of Israel, about the children of Israel, they're lost sheep. Notice the metaphor he uses for Israel is sheep. For her, it's a puppy. But notice the puppy is in the house. She's not lost. But the sheep of Israel, they are lost, and he has to find them. So if anything would, be, would have been offensive, is to call Israel lost sheep. A Jew would have been offended at Jesus saying, they're lost and they need him. So if you read it contextually, it's actually a word of encouragement. You have a place in the master's house. You'll be taken care of. You are beloved to the master. But first, let me focus on the children because they are the children of the covenant, the heirs of the promise. So that's what he means.